Hey guys, my name is Justin and welcome to Hellsboro, where we care about the design behind designer luxury. And if you do do, make sure to subscribe. Well, wherever it is, I still don't know. I don't think I'm ever gonna learn. So for today's video, I thought it would be fun to talk about essential bag shapes. This video is kind of for people who maybe already have their like first one or two bags or uh, if you follow like my train of thought, like, you know, you have something that's a little versatile, you can carry it a few different ways, you can wear it like every day, or you're not afraid to use, and you can pretty much use it in any situation. For people who are in that situation, I wanted to talk about some bag shapes to help them uh, kind of diversify, ooh, diversify their collection. My idea is I was gonna talk about some of these bag shapes, talk about the versions that you may already know, and maybe make a few unusual suggestions. So let's get started. So the first bag shape I wanted to talk about was the tote bag. So the tote bag, we all know, is a workhorse. Some people do use this as their everyday bag. It's not necessarily my first choice. Oh wait, I do use one as a work bag. I'm just lying on camera for fun. Anyway. <laughs> What I wanted to talk about were maybe like the larger sized tote bags that maybe you use for a weekend trip or not saying you should use these as an, as an errand bag, but it's something that's a little bit more of a, it's a workhorse, like you can put a lot of stuff in it. So some of the bags that I think you may be more familiar with uh, when you hear tote bag are things like the Louis Vuitton Neverfull or the Dior tote bag. Everyone knows them, everyone loves them. Fabulous. But what I wanted to talk about were just a few suggestions. So the first suggestion I have is the Loewe Flamenco. <laughs> they still call it a large clutch, <laughs> but it comes with shoulder straps to make it like a tote bag. And I think it is hilarious. It is the, the typical like Loewe Flamenco. It's been there since like the 60s or 70s as a clutch, but then they like supersized it like the hamburger. And then they like added these tote bag straps, supersizing it up. You still get like a lovely like wave to the leather and you still get the flamenco knots that you can pull and tighten, whatever. But then what I like about it is it, it's not just like a regular like bucket kind of shape tote bag. It has a little bit more softness. So that's why I like that one. The next one, oh God, I have to look up the name for this one. Okay, the next one is from Jacques Mou. It's called Le sac à line. Le sac à lin? Probably a lin. Nope, that's Swedish. Hold on. Lin. Lin. Le sac à linge. So the, the one I specifically am talking about is the one in blue. It is a, it's a tote bag. They call it a weekender because it's so huge. But it has a strap. And then it actually has a couple of other straps close to the end to help like act as closures. That reminds me of this guy right here. It's like this huge blue tote bag that really reminds me of like an Ikea like tote bag. And then, I don't know, I think it's a lovely kind of like that boat shape. I don't know if it is a direct reference to the Ikea bag, but in like a more subtle way than Balenciaga did. But I still think it's, it's a beautiful color and it comes in other colors besides this bright blue. But just having this large tote bag that actually has a strap because like, I mean, if you're carrying a lot of stuff, it's nice to be able to wear things different ways, right? So this one is, it's a cotton canvas. So it is super casual. You don't have to like worry about it looking too fussy if you're just like running errands with it or anything. And then you also don't have to feel guilty if you want to use it for errands or for like a, like a trip bag or something like that. So I do, I do really like this one. And then the last one is kind of cheating. It's not exactly a tote. Maybe I should just say like, oh, these are, like weekender shapes. That's not really a shape though, right? But whatever. So the last one is um, <laughs> something that I actually added onto my wish list. I'll link it in the corner. It's the Balenciaga logo projector handbag. So I get it, it's not a tote, but it does have like this size that's similar to these. And it really, I mean, it has the same kind of like bigger straps. I don't know if you could comfortably fit it on your shoulder necessarily in the same way that uh, these other bags that I mentioned before do, but it still is like that large shape. You can definitely use this as a workhorse, but it is so weird. So 
the concept, again, is just this leather bag with a protector built on the bottom that projects out the word Balenciaga. So when you're putting it down on the table or walking it and then you look at the floor, you just see Balenciaga made out of light. And I think that is hilarious. So that's what I got for these, like, tote bags plus the projector bag. But let's move on. For the next bag shape, what I want to talk about are crossbody bags. We all love a good crossbody bag, specifically those like little tiny ones. When you just have it going across your body, it like creates a really beautiful long line and it's just big enough for you to carry all of your essentials. So these bags are super great for quick errands or light days where you just don't need a lot for some reason. I do not relate, but you know. That's the dream, right? When I think of these bags, I think of like the Louis Vuitton multi pochette, or even something like the, uh, like a Gucci Marmont, kind of like classic flap kind of thing, where it's like you can just pop it on, wear it as a crossbody, whatever. But let me tell you, this first suggestion, I actually really love. They call it the crystal embellished shoulder bag, but it is, it has a long strap, so it acts as a crossbody. But again, I really love that Prada has taken like the triangle shape from their logo, from their like, I guess, emblem, and like used it in actual bag shapes and structures, and I think it's so interesting. So when I stumbled upon this bag, immediately I was so into it. And we've seen like the the re-edition crossbodies that have like the crystal embellishments on it, but then the fact that they turned it into a triangle. I love it. I love difficult bag shapes. Those are great, right? So the fact that it's just this like little triangle with a little mini pouch and it's just studded with crystals in this beautiful like checkerboard kind of pattern, great. And then the other style I wanted to talk about is something that's near and dear to my heart. If you're familiar with me, you know I love the Loewe puzzle. But the thing is, I think not enough love is given to those really like craftsman, like artistic versions of the puzzle bag. So the one I wanted to highlight specifically for here. So it's a small size, but the bag comes in white. And this is actually the puzzle edge. So instead of the typical like leather on leather sewn, it's connected so that like the edges of the pieces of leather are very visible. And it creates more of this like origami style feeling for the bag. And then this bag in particular actually has leather woven around the handle to make this really beautiful like basket weave feel. And of course, like, it's got to be interesting to like, carry from the top handle. The reason why I wanted to add this on the list is to just not, you know, take these, like, beautiful puzzle bags, like, too lightly. Because, sure, like, it had a moment and it still is, like, a beautiful bag, but I think they're still creating really interesting versions of these bags, either with marquetry to add on this kind of, like, print feeling to it, but I think more impressively, they're still playing with the construction and they're playing with the actual artisanal detailing features that are all over this bag. So for me, this is a win and I love that bag. But yeah, let's move on to the next bag shape. So this next bag shape, I would say, is probably one of the least essential, but still it's good to have in your collection. And the bag shape I'm talking about are clutches. They're not the most utilitarian, like it is It is still a bag that you can put a bunch of stuff in, but a lot, oftentimes like, you know, it, you just carry it by your hand. So it's, it's not as versatile as some of these other bag shapes. That being said, who doesn't love a good clutch? Something to make you feel fancy when you're like going out or going out. <laughs> At least when I think of this kind of bag shape, in the moment now, I think like the Bottega pouch or the Loewe Flamenco, they have that kind of like waviness to them that has like this very soft feel, which I think is quite beautiful. But then I wanted to talk a couple of other styles. So the first one I wanted to talk about is from Loewe, because we know I love Loewe, but it is the bracelet pouch. So basically, it's like a pencil bag, like it looks like a pencil bag that you would like have in school, except like kind of blown up, it's pretty big. But then the great thing here is it does come with a shoulder strap, like a really thin one, so it's not like too insane or anything. But then the other benefit to this bag is that it does interact with your body, so you, if you choose. It's called the bracelet pouch, right? So you can actually wear it as a bracelet, which 
I mean, it's a bag, it's fashion, turn in jewelry, do whatever you want. I love that, and I think that's so interesting. Like, I love when uh, things that you maybe don't interact with the body in specific ways when they're made to do that. So it kind of like twists kind of like the, the definition of what it is. Beautiful, and I love the versatility of that. The next bag I wanted to talk about is from Givenchy. So this one's called the Chain Clutch Bag, and this is actually made out of metal, which I think is really cool. So one of the best things I think to happen when Givenchy got Matthew Williams as its creative director, he's known for his work with hardware, right? He, he knows how to create these like emblematic, like kind of uh, yeah, hardware pieces, like heavy chains, even just within Givenchy, he's created like locks and, you know, they look like tool things and whatever. But one of the things that he's done is he actually turned the idea of like these like, I guess they're called curb chains or whatever, it's just a style of chain. But then he made it into a G to kind of act as another like house icon, which I think is beautiful, actually. And then the fact that he turned that into a clutch is super fun. So then you get this like really shiny, I guess it's shiny when you get it new, but then you're probably gonna ding it up if you actually use it. But the whole bag is hardware. Like to me, that's like great. That's so funny. And then the other one I wanted to talk about is also from Givenchy, because I think this one is beautiful. So this one is called the Micro Cutout Bag. Um, so this one's a leather bag, but then the hardware on this, oh my God, Matthew Williams. Beautiful, love it, good job, excellent. It's this like square framed bag where like the frame also becomes a handle. I, okay, honestly I might be like into it because it kind of reminds me of like the hula hoop bag. I'm just a narcissist, whatever. But it like, it, the, the frame kind of becomes the handle. And then on the top of that, there's a like, like a, I think they call it like the 4G chain that like comes around the side. And I think you can wear it as a shoulder bag too, which is also nice, but then if you're, you know, if it was me, I would only be carrying it by that, that little, like, spindly little handle up at the top. But I love bags that are, like, architectural in that way, that have the, yeah, it's the, it's the frame, and it becomes another part of the bag that you can interact with. It's so cool. Okay, I'm gonna stop gushing, and we're gonna move on. All right, and then on to the last shape. So, this honestly is probably my least favorite shape, but... It is in, and I do think it's here to stay for at least a while, but it's a shoulder bag. So when I think of shoulder bags, I think of things like the Prada Re-Edition and the uh, Fendi Baguette, those kinds of bags, where it's just kind of like, boop, you just pop it on, it's a simple bag shape. Nothing wrong with that, I think they're still very beautiful, but I wanted to offer some strange suggestions. So. After looking at all of these shapes kind of like as an overview, I was like, oh, okay, we're playing with like children's blocks today. So here we go, let's get started. So this first one is the Jacquemus Le Sacrum. It's a round bag, it's a circle bag. I mentioned this in other videos, but I do think it like reminds me of like the hula hoop where it's like the idea of the circle and then the bag, and whatever. But I do think it's a beautiful bag. The nice thing is this one does come with a strap that you can wear like crossbody your shoulder. I guess it is a shoulder bag in general, but like the way that they show the model carrying it, it's like tucked on the shoulder and then like thrown back to the model's back. I think it's beautiful, more than like that. I think it's super fun and it's nice to see like a, a very structural bag in an interesting shape like that. The next one is, I'm pretty sure this is a new bag shape from Bottega, but it's called the Brick Cassette. So one of the things I like about this bag is it still plays with like the blown up interaccio, like, leather weaving technique, like all of the cassette bags, but then instead of it being this like crossbody, I always kind of wondered like why they didn't make a shoulder bag out of it, and they did. And I think it just makes a lot of sense. It's, it's already that like really like rectangular shape, which again, children's blocks, but then just as a shoulder bag, I think it's really cute in that way, in that uh, you still have the iconic house code, of the Interaccio, but then uh, instead of it being this more like heftier package, it's something that you can just like put on your shoulder and I don't know, I think it's really 
Interesting. I kind of wish the strap was like long enough to also turn it into a crossbody and then when you want it as a shoulder bag you just pull it up a crap ton and then it becomes a shoulder bag and you just have like a really long, like really long strap hanging down, but I'm not a designer there. But if you want to hire me. But yeah, so there's that one. And then the last bag I wanted to talk about is the Prada Triangle Leather Pouch. So it basically is like kind of like the same idea of the re-editions of just like that shoulder bag but instead of the pouch being this like very 2000s kind of like basic bag shape they used the Prada logo to add that triangle shape at the bottom which I think is beautiful and you know it continues our children's block theme. I'm kind of obsessed with like triangle shaped bags right now so this is just something I have to process but I do think that like if you're gonna get like a bag that's maybe not super versatile and it can't really carry a lot but you want something that's like super fun and trendy and it has a little bit of edge I mean all of these three would work for a shoulder bag but like the triangle love it all right but then that's all I have for you today let me know do you guys like any of these bags do you have any of these bags I know like they're not all the newest but there are some on there that I think are just popped up recently so I'd love to get your input on if you like like any of these bags if you think they're kind of just like eh. yeah let me know I love to hear from you guys if you like this video please make sure to like and subscribe it lets me know that you like this kind of content and that you too care about the design behind designer luxury until next time I don't have a prop hello okay I have to take this